Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about acute glomerular nephritis. And if you do like this video, why don't you go on over and head over to ninjanerd.org. That's where we have our notes and illustrations for all the lectures we put up here on YouTube. And if you could also subscribe and hit the like button. Actually, go down and leave me a comment because I really like to read them and I do respond to you guys as much as I can. But let's get started with acute glomerular nephritis. So when we talk about acute glomerular nephritis, we're focusing into what portion, right? We're still looking into this nephron, right? We're still looking at this glomerulus. So let's first start off with going through our anatomy and quick identifying our afferent arterial, our efferent. We have our glomerulus and then our Bowman's capsule here with the Bowman's space, right? So as we get blood coming in, filtering, blood going out, we get our creation of our filtrate and then our filtrate eventually goes through our nephron and it becomes urine. And this is great, right? This works for us every day as, you know, every second of our lives as we are creating this filtration, we're getting filtrate that eventually becomes urine and then we're able to get rid of waste products. But what happens in acute glomerulonephritis is there's some disruption in this filtration that then causes an issue within the kidney function. So let's pop on over to this little diagram I have here where we have a picture of a pediatric patient and we have this issue with post streptococcal or a streptococcus infection. So patient could either have two types of different types of streptococcal infections, streptococcus infections. They could have the big one, strep throat, right? So we have a child that had strep, okay? Or they could have had impintego, right? And they got this little rash. And approximately two weeks after, when it's been untreated, they may come in and talk to us and say, I don't know, you know, the, my kid's having an issue going to the bathroom or it's really dark urine or they just, they aren't acting right. The kid may say something like, I'm just really tired, I don't feel good, anything like that. And we need to understand how does a post-streptococcal infection or a streptococcus infection cause an issue in here. So let's think about it really quickly. Patient is infected by bacteria, a streptococcal bacteria, right? This streptococcus bacteria is a mean guy, right? And he wants to cause issues, right? And our immune system says, uh oh, we have an intruder, this isn't great. We gotta start making our antibodies. Right? We wanna fight this infection, and that's great, right? But what happens is, as this is untreated, and as these antibodies keep growing, right? We keep making more of them, they come through our glomerulus down into here and start embedding themselves. And that's gonna cause a problem, why? Let's remember that within our glomerulus, right, we have our fenestrated capillary, those little areas that are allowing for filtration. We have our glomerular basement membrane, this blue part here, which is our GBM. And then we have our podocytes that have the little slits in between that are allowing fil for filtration. And they are supposed to be able to help us block white blood cells, red blood cells, and protein, right? So things that do get through are amino acids, glucose, electrolytes, BUN, creatinine, all that stuff is getting passed down to the urine because it's waste. When we have these antibodies get into our GBM, they are gonna cause some issues. There is going to be some inflammation that ultimately is going to cause damage. And when there is damage to this filtration, we are now not going to be able to block white blood cells, red blood cells, and proteins. So now that we have some damage, this openings may be a little bigger, and they're going to allow those bigger things to get through. Now when they get through, they are going to be present in our urine, and they're going to cause a lot of other issues because we want to remember Protein is really important for our homeostatic balance, right, of our blood, able to keep things where they're supposed to be, help us push fluids and push blood through. 
And when we don't have that hydrostatic pressure and homeostasis of our blood being corrected by the protein, because now we're losing it, we're gonna have other issues. And that's when our patients are gonna come in and start having some complaints of signs and symptoms. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of acute glomerulonephritis? Now we have a patient coming into us and they're gonna have some complaints, right? Or clinical manifestations that may send us down the road of thinking, okay, maybe there's something going on with this patient's kidneys. So first we have a patient come in and right off the bat, maybe they're saying, ah, I just haven't been feeling good. I've been feeling really fatigued for the past couple of weeks. Uh, I'm having some type of like trouble going to the bathroom. I'm not really peeing a lot. It, it just seems weird. And because of that, I'm also noticing that it's looking a little like red or dark. I'm not really sure. So as a nurse, we're looking at this and we're checking off boxes of, okay, this patient's having oliguria, this patient's having hematuria, this patient's having azotemia, right? Which is decreased urine output, blood in the urine, and then dark urine. And then they're gonna say, also, I don't know, I just really, something feels like wrong. Like, I just don't feel great. So we take their vitals and one of the things we might see is an increase in their blood pressure. And as you further assess this patient, you might be saying, or, is there anything else going on that you didn't really notice? You know, uh, are you having any other symptoms or things like that? And they may say, yeah, I've also been getting like headaches more often. You're like, okay, headaches, got it. Uh, anything else going on with them? Can I see your face? And you're gonna notice maybe on their face, their eyes, their hands, maybe their legs too, depending on how far along we are, that there might be some sort of issue with swelling. Right? And this patient may be showing some edema. So with that edema, it's gonna be maybe on the face, eyes, that's where we're really looking, that's where it can first show up. And then it could go to the other areas like the feet, the hands, and then even into the lungs, right? And that's where we can ask them if they have any other issues going to the bathroom, you know, are they having any issues, are they on any pills, any extra uh, medications that might be causing this, any changes in medication. And that's when we're gonna move into our diagnostic tests because as we look at these clinical manifestations, are they really, if you didn't know what this video was about and you weren't here to figure out, you know, what glomerulonephritis is, if you're looking at these, it could tell you a little bit of, okay, we're honing on the kidney, but there's not much else to it, right? So we start taking our diagnostic tests. We go in to get some blood work, right? And when we get some blood work and we're looking at this patient and we see a cluster of things that are talking about urine and blood pressure, we can start to think about filtration, right? So this patient is having an issue with their glomerular filtration rate. There's been damage to the glomerulus, right? So we get this blood work back and we're going to see a decrease in that GFR, right? Let's think about it. There was a irritation, damage, inflammation to the glomerular basement membrane. Because of that, there has been an, an issue with filtering. Because of that issue with filtering, we're now seeing things that are going on within the kidney. One of those is a decrease in the filtration rate. So if the GFR is down and we're not filtering the way we need to, that means we're gonna have an increase in what? What are the things we start looking at? We start seeing an increase in the waste products, right? The BUN and creatinine are gonna be high. There might even be an increase in the potassium because we're not filtering out properly. When we're not filtering out properly the things that we need to, like our protein and our red blood cells and our white blood cells, and they're able to fit through those damaged areas into the nephron, through and out through the kidney and then becoming urine, we're gonna see that in the urine. So what's gonna be going on with the urine? We're gonna be seeing things like proteinuria, right? We already said it, there's gonna be other things like hematuria, azotemia. And because of all of this, it's gonna tell us that there is an increase in the urine specific gravity, right? And this is where maybe offhandedly, they may, we may or may not do this test until we get a little further down the line, but this patient may say, yeah, a couple uh, you know, weeks ago, maybe like 10 days ago, I started having like, 
thought it was a sore throat, but it, it kind of went away. And that's where we can get a titer, right? So if you guys remember anything about going into nursing school or even getting out to clinical floor, you actually can get some blood work done prior to see if there's any type of updates that you need to your body, right? And one of those we can do is a titer. A titer is going to check for antibodies. Certain tests check for certain different antibodies. There is one called the antostreptolysin titer. It's also known as the ASO titer. And this titer is going to check for the streptolysin, right? It's going to tell us that if it comes back positive, there was a recent infection and we are positive for these antibodies within our blood, meaning that this recent infection could have caused issues. And that's where we start to think, okay, this patient has a positive ASO titer, right? That has to do with a recent streptococcus infection. Because of that, they also are having a decreased GFR and all these issues with their urine and their blood work. This is where we start to think clinically down the line of, okay, this patient potentially has acute glomerulonephritis, but every patient that we take care of, just because they have the same diagnosis doesn't mean it's the same care. So now we're gonna talk about the treatment and the nursing interventions, and we're gonna be taking care of this patient based upon this particular patient's presentation. So let's talk about that now. What is the treatment gonna look like for this patient, right? So as we look at this, we're gonna start thinking about what, what does the patient look like and what is the patient presenting with? So generically, if they're having that swelling, right, our goal is to decrease that swelling. So one of the things we can give this patient is diuretics. We're gonna pull that water off. We're gonna make sure they're not having other issues with the fluid and the edema. If they're having hypertension, we want to bring that down by giving their antihypertensives. And then if they're having any issues or if there is any lingering infection, we can also give them the antibiotics, right? And there's many other things we could be doing here, right? Depending on that patient, if they're having fevers, we can give them Tylenol, any supportive care. But overall, the things that we're going to be correcting in this patient is trying to get that fluid off, making sure that the hypertensives are working for their blood pressure, and then giving them any other supplemental things that they need. If their damage to their kidney is so far that they need dialysis, that is an option. It can be temporary, it could be, you know, maybe a little longer. It depends on the patient, and it's from patient to patient that we need to take the treatment into consideration. But when we look at our nursing interventions, that's where a lot of them, we start to think of those same clusters we're always getting tested on, we're always getting questions on. We have a patient who's having issues with kidney filtration, right? We have a patient that is having trouble with fluid and urine output. So what is the biggest thing or the, one of the biggest overarching nursing interventions we're gonna be honing in on for this patient? It's gonna be those I and O's, right? And with the I and O's, where's that cluster of all that care we start thinking of? We gotta start thinking about those daily weights. With those daily weights, we wanna start thinking about, this could be a pediatric patient, right? So their fluids might be a little different. So we're looking at that urine output as well. We're seeing if there's a correlation between the intake and the output and then the daily weights. And for the urine output, the adult is usually the 30 milliliters per hour. For the pediatrics, we're looking at one milliliter per kilogram per hour. Okay, a little different there. With the eyes and nose, with the intake and output, we're also gonna be assessing any type of treatment that we give this patient. So if we're giving them any type of diuretic. We're watching that output, but we're also gonna be reassessing edema. We're gonna be looking at the edema, so we're checking the feet, the face. Another way we can also reassess the edema is making sure we're listening, right? Auscultating those lung fields. Making sure there's no fluid getting trapped in there, causing shortness of breath, causing issues with our breathing, right? As we reassess, we're also gonna be rechecking the blood pressure, right? Those vital signs are very important, making sure we got things going on with our patient. 
We also want to make sure, especially this could be something that we add up here, is putting this patient on telemetry. If they are having issues with that potassium, we want to make sure that we are checking telemetry, making sure we're having no other issues or arrhythmias with the heart. And then we also want to focus in on that diet. This patient is going to have issues with their diet, particularly are they getting an, um, protein at the right levels so that we're not overdoing it, we're not giving them too much. We make sure that we're not giving them too much potassium. We make sure that their sodium is good because we want to remember with these patients, everything that we do with these patients, giving them these medications, changing the food that they're eating, all of this has to do with a decreased ability to filter, right, within the kidney. So we want to make sure that whatever we're doing and giving to them, their filtering is off. So these medications are going to have a different lifespan possibly within the body, right? They could build up over time. We want to make sure that we're keeping in the back of our mind that the GFR is decreased within this patient and because of that there could be a lot of different fallout. And we want to make sure that we're checking all of these things. We're making sure the eyes and nose are good. We're reassessing and listening to lungs and checking all the telemetry and checking the diet, making sure that they're eating appropriately because that's all going to help us get this patient back because we can reverse this glomerulonephritis if we are treating it correctly. But if it goes on for too long, there could be damage to that kidney that we cannot reverse. So I hope you learned something from this video, Ninja Nerds. I hope it made sense. As always, until next time.